decent turnout. Uh, we got close to 30 people so far and it's just gone what, 20 past two. So uh, that's not bad. Maybe the uh, the allure of the raffle drew them here. But uh, we shall see. I'll have, be having a little word with uh, some of the punters here and uh, see what they got to say. Here today to raise awareness of the impending doom for e-cigs. We've travelled up in the minibus from Newquay. I think there's about 10 or 11 of us all together. Uh, basically, we want to raise awareness in the general sort of e-cig user rather than vaping community because people just don't realise how they're going to be affected or if they do realise they've got an I'm all right, jack attitude and they're not uh, not really, really gend up on what's going to happen. So, nice for us to see you here, Liam. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Nice yeah. to be here. Lovely day. It is, isn't it? Yes. You, uh, you travel far? I uh, come from Bristol. Yes. And uh, how are you finding the events here? Well, there's about maybe three times more people there are than there were at the last one I came to in Wales. So that's really good. Bridging's done an excellent job again. Of he has. It. Yeah. yeah. And of Top course, uh, see who's out of shot there as well. She's she had a hand. Oh, quite. Yeah. All the flyers and pictures and yes. you know, general encouragement. Yes. And uh, do you have any hopes after this that this, things are going to pick up? Well. It's sort of a gradual process, isn't it, of raising awareness and trying to get out of our little bubble and into the real world. And yeah, I do have hopes because as it gets closer and as it becomes more real, more people are naturally going to get involved. Yeah. Excellent stuff. And uh, will you be delivering any speeches like you did at Boat Camp? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, no plans for any speeches today. Ah, uh, shame. That was an enjoyable speech. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Superb. That was it. As you can see from the lot behind me, we've got a lot of support for this protest today. Hopefully we've got the same amount of numbers in London at the same time. Everyone here is really concerned about the TPD and we are catching every vapor that we see with an e -cig going across the square and we're handing them our protest meetings. Hopefully that will get more sense into people about the future come next year. From everyone that we've spoken to, everyone just wants to get the wider public more knowledgeable about it, make them aware. And all the people here have actually 
bought raffle tickets and all our raffle money would be going to Dr. Epper's research. And everyone thinks that's the best thing. Yes, it's a little bit of an incentive, rather than just for the advocacy, but everyone here is motivated to keep their habit and hobby going. I can't think of anything much better than seeing all these bodies here supporting a protest like this. Yes, it's a little bit relaxed, maybe because that's how us vapors like it. But maybe we should change, get a little bit more rowdy. But that's just me. I don't know about everyone else, and I don't know about Matt, about you know, all your all your placard waving, all your oh, we want a bit like beef jam, you know. But let's leave that there. Everyone here is supportive of the cause, and that's great. It would be nice if we had both to 100, but we have broken the numbers of the Cardiff mates by a fair bit, and that makes me chuff, it makes Matt chuff, it makes Mr. Leach chuff. But yeah, we still need more people to do things like this. And that's the bottom line. We can't be quiet, we can't hide behind our laptops, we can't hide behind Twitter. At the same time today, in the respective time zones, you've got loads more protests like this, maybe a little bit more animated across Europe. At the moment, we've got no idea of numbers on, on, on the street when it comes to Europe. But hopefully by the end of the protest, and by the time we go for our relaxing drink later on and announce the raffle, a lot more numbers will come in via Twitter. So, yeah, keep going. We need to do this more often. Just keep nagging the powers that be. We're not going away. To be a vendor after May next year. Yeah. And I'm definitely still going to be a vendor after next May. But I want all these people who do more than half here with egos and eye sticks that haven't got the foggiest that in a year's time. They won't be able to get a new ice stick when it packs, or they won't be able to get a new bloody pro tank when it dies on them. But they've just got away, and they need to make things alive. So, so you would think that the CPD, as it is now, without even being able to possibly make it work, will shut you down the centre? Finish it completely. So, we, you know, we will, for whenever the government decide to bring in force the TPD. That, that'll finish us because everything we sell in our shop will be illegal. We can't, we haven't working that. We haven't got the money to be spending thousands of pounds per item, getting them through their testing, the regulations, six months before we can sell them. Uh, it's just, so when they bring that in, we'll have 12 months to comply. So from the date the government says up yours, we'll have 12 months just to sell our stock off hoard as much for ourselves and our friends as we can and that'll be us finished and that'll be true of all these vendors that are working this afternoon going oh i'm not closing i might cost me 100 quid it's going to cost a bloody lot more if we don't do something and i'm quite it's not the attitude of a lot of vendors so every vendor in wales should be here today or at least a representative I mean, we couldn't afford to pay somebody to man the shop, so we closed. But some of the bigger vendors, they can still leave staff there and still bring the staff that don't, the, don't aren't needed in the shop and bring them down here. So we've got here now 30, 40 people. That should be three or four hundred minimum. Yeah. Um, so um, on, on the Facebook event for London, six people said that they were going. And about. And in our January for the anniversary of the previous year, uh, only 13 turned up to the Yeah, well, party. we let you down on that because there was a late date. Yeah. And it just happened we were, we were coming down, going down to Cardiff on the, on the original date. Then when it was changed, we actually had a 50th birthday in the family in Nottingham that weekend. And we just got late. So that's why we didn't. So, so if you if you saw thirteen, you 
as to the number that are here and that would you, would you think that if we got assembly members coming, do you think they would actually pick up on it? I think they'd look at it and laugh and see it out if there was only 13 people here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's great to see people, but it should be. It should be three, four hundred people at least, here, if not more. Because how many, how many shops in Wales now? Uh, how many shops? Oh, um, the SEI count at, what, 50-odd? Uh, that 50-odd, that's, I mean, a couple from every shop, at least there's a hundred people, plus all the customers. I bought a mini booklet from our shop, with myself, my wife, my sister and my brother-in-law, at the vendors, but the rest are customers, and we've got a mini bus, and we've brought them up and said, look, if you still want to be our customers in a year's time, you can get down there and do something about it. And every vendor should have been doing the same. And I, and I mean, a bit argumentative, because, oh, well, I've got this and that to do, but at the end of the day, if you value your vacation, then you need to get out Um, so the TPE is essentially shutting down the Yeah. What, from your point of view as a rent vendor, what do you think is about um, government policy and rollbacks? Do you think that will affect you? Um, in a small way, because we do get a number of customers that come in and say, oh, I want one of these, one of these smoky sticks so I don't have to go out and talk or whatever. So there are a few people, but that is maybe just the first step into getting off the back of So, I mean, it will affect us. I don't think, you know, it won't stop me and the majority of our vaping customers rather than eating users. It won't stop them and go, oh God, we can't use them indoors anymore. I'm going to go back on the stinkers. That's not going to happen. But it's going to affect us a bit. Uh, Susan interpretation of the proposal so that is prohibited from allowing tests in the shop. That's a big blow. Yeah. How, you know, how do you have a vaping shop where you can't pay? I mean, we've got, we've got over 50 flavours on testers in the shop. And what are we going to do you know, in our long winter? So, you know, I'll take that up outside, go outside with them so they don't do a runner with your kids. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's going to be crazy, you know, but, uh, you know, greater minds and, and all that. Uh, so, right, so as you said, if we ma actually manage to get the same outcome, you would think that you would laugh at everyone who can come out of us, but don't have the way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I think, uh, you know, such, so, um, you know, we, we're always, we're preaching to them. X million people in in the UK are now off to tobacco, lit tobacco purely because of eating, and what we've got to back it up. You know, it, it's only quite to millions of people. You know, they're going to go, oh, yeah, you know, uh, you're just a, a small bunch of over enthusiastic vapors, you're hobbyists. You know, but if this was packed with people and people on ego, you know, then I think we can have more power. Because you know, I know we tend to have faces, as experienced faces, we tend to laugh a little bit at, at the ego users and that. But they're, they're the core base of, of vaping. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, we're a small percentage. We're ho essentially hobbyists. Whereas a lot of people, it's purely just a way of, of lit tobacco. And an ego, Maybe a spinner and a and a, an e bod or um, uh, an aspire ETS or something is as much as they will ever need because it does what they want it to do and it keeps them off the tobacco. But that's stopping that, and that's the real problem. I don't think the likes of me, you, Matt, there, be any of us will have problems getting what we want to carry on our hobby. But the new vapors. They're going to try a cigar light <laughs> in the bin, and that's it. They'll carry on on the pack, and that, that's the real, real problem with the CCD. It's going to shut that doorway from tobacco into a, into a muck, and regardless of all the crap you're in the paper, it's much, much healthier. Much healthier. Uh, 
So even though even though you've got the you know you've got the science to back it up then like it is ninety five ninety nine percent according to safe stuff. Uh yeah. Yeah, the politicians and so called policy makers uh think that those figures aren't good enough. They want no, it to no, be hundred percent safe, but nothing ever is. No. They were, they don't even look at them in my opinion. Bang for somebody go and stick a leaflet in his hand. Don't let him walk past. So, at the end of the day, they're not bothered. They you know, throw all the statistics out of the wall. You know, they, they don't want to listen. They, they, there was a prime example. Go and go and take a sample of the air on the platform of a train station. It's one of the most unhealthy places you could ever go. You know, you're breathing in so much crap, but they don't ban trains. <laughs> you know, so, and they don't make them clean their eyes up. It's, it's like, um, from, from Brick, Mark Brickford's point of view, it's, uh, you know, uh, instead of looking at it as a tool, it's like a seat for people like, <coughs> things like the seat belt plus the back of the belt. Brickford would rather ban the car than you get the seat belt off. So, because he's so blinkered so in his approach, and as you said, he doesn't look at the fact he does, he just gets the whispers in his ear going, right, you need to get rid of this, you need to sort it out, so it's not safe. I don't think that comes into it, I think it's not. The darker forces behind the decision. There's somebody with a lot more clout than we will ever have to go and we want to be a And he's a factor in the own just doing what he wants. And I think that's true right through government, right through European governments as well. And it all comes back to big farmer and big tobacco. They've got so much clout. You know, and that's, that's what we're fighting against. But that don't mean we have to go down without the fight. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, everybody needs now, to now the social can start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now the social can start. Yeah, now the social can start.